Hello everyone and welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie. This little fish is one you've probably seen before, along with its more well-known cousin the Scarlet Baddis, as they have somewhat taken the nano fish keeping community by storm, at least that is, for those who can actually get hold of them. But what is difficult to convey is just how small they really are, and this little fella is teensy weensy. In fact, this full-grown male is about one inch from the tip of his nose to the tip of his tail. And he is a black tiger baddis, an impressive name for one slippery tiny little bit of fish. But what he lacks in size, he makes up for with personality. Black tigers are fish who come and go. They skulk about in dark places, and I can go days and days without even seeing any of mine. But that just means that when they do show themselves, it is always a special moment that makes them all the more worthwhile to keep. And so though, what are black tigers like to keep, and what kind of setup do they need? Well, black tigers hail from Myanmar, where they inhabit small, densely vegetated, often heavily overgrown waterways. This does, of course, mean that they are not the bravest of little fish. I tend to find they will come out into the open when they're hunting or displaying for brief periods of time, but they will quickly move back to dense colour and certainly never stay out in the open for very long, especially if there are bigger fish around. Being on the very small side as well, and rather slow, they presumably rely on not being noticed in order to keep themselves out of trouble. So though, this is going to be a fish who needs a densely planted tank with lots and lots of hiding places and plenty of hardscape for them to take cover under. And believe me, you will want to provide them with that nice complicated tank, because they are a delight to watch as they explore, always nipping in and out of cover, and they seem to move in a very considered and measured way, and that's part of the appeal of watching them. These are not fish who are going to be constantly on the move, dashing about the tank from one side to the other. No, no, black tigers look like they have thought very carefully about how each move they are going to make is going to affect them. They're like life's chess players, always with each moveset planned in advance. And they don't seem to mind a pale substrate, neither, although I do tend they look a little bit better over a darker substrate. But even over pale, males are happy to show off their colours to any passing female or any other rivals in the tank with them. Just to say, though, without the protection of having plenty of cover nearby, they can become very skittish, and they will simply hide themselves away in the darkest part of the tank for the vast majority of the time. Provide them with plenty of cover around, though, and they will still spend an awful lot of their time in the shadows, but they'll make just enough appearances to make sure that you still know that they are there. They also very rarely leave the lower third of the tank, unless there is plenty of very dense cover further up the walls or up towards the surface, and so the length and width of the tank home is far more important to them than the depth. When it comes to water parameters, though, one of the really appreciable qualities of the tiger baddis is their preference for slightly alkaline water, whereas many fish, and especially smaller ones, tend to prefer more acidic water. Tiger baddis, though, they thrive in a pH anywhere between 7 and 9. Not only this, but they're also very tolerant of cooler temperatures as well. Anywhere between 15 and 25 degrees C is absolutely perfect for them. Being on the small and slow side, though, they don't really like very fast-flowing water, and when it is too fast for them, they will try to take shelter around different pieces of hardscape just to keep themselves in a little bit of an eddy. Now, as far as I can tell, in some parts of the world, I do believe black tiger baddis are relatively easy to come by. But so far, I am finding sourcing them in the UK to be more than a bit of a challenge. In fact, both of my two, both of whom are males, sadly, came from a shop where they were the only two that were for sale, and I haven't seen a single one since then. In fact, that was the only time I've ever seen them for sale at all in any country. Luckily though, considering how challenging they can be to find, so long as you find one, that's going to be enough, because black tigers don't have any strong schooling tendencies, and they tend to squabble amongst the members of their own kind to the point where you can end up with one dominant individual who will take over an entire tank, and all the others are going to get bullied into staying hidden. If you are looking to keep a group, 
It's best to aim for one male with a couple of females in a medium tamp at least 50 centimeters long. Or if you're looking to keep more than one male, aim for a base length of at least 100 centimeters. Because even in this 80 centimeter tank, my more dominant male would happily go along and seek out the smaller one just to harass until he had to be removed. With plenty of cover though, enough to break up the sight lines between the males, then more than one could definitely be kept in a single tank. So far, so good then. But here is where a lot of keepers just might get turned off from keeping tiger baddis. They are pretty terrible at taking prepared foods. Mine have flat refused any form of food that isn't moving since I have had them, and I've had them for about a year now. And target feeding them with live food is also really challenging too, because one, I can never find them in the first place, and two, they tend to vanish as soon as they think there is any sign of danger or anything going on that they don't like. And so, I have invariably had to resort to keeping these tiny little fish in the biggest tanks that I can, just so that they can definitely find enough food for themselves. Luckily as well, they are prodigious little hunters of small invertebrates and micro worms, and so long as they're being kept in a mature tank that has plenty of that fauna available to them, they can do a really good job of feeding themselves. Also, I actually go one step further and I make sure that all of my black tigers are housed with a healthy sized colony of Neocaridina shrimp, because I have absolutely no doubt they will happily scoff any little tiny shrimplets that they come across. And so I just need to make sure that the colony retains enough adults so that they can keep the shrimplets topped up and then they in turn can keep the baddest topped up. When it comes to tank mates for tiger baddis, again, a little bit of care does need to be taken, as these are very small and slow, and not very brave. And so, a tank full of boisterous barbs probably isn't going to be very helpful for them. Tank mates can certainly be active and fast, just so long as they have no interest in occupying the lower third of the tank where the black tigers are going to be hanging out. So species such as rainbow fish or rasboras or the upper swimming danios, hatchet fish, anything along those lines, it doesn't really matter, just so long as it's not going to be racing in and out of all of the dark spaces, spooking the baddest out of their hiding places repeatedly. Or, of course, other tank mates can just be along the sedate lines, so that they're calm enough to not really bother the black tigers in the first place. In fact, the only other fish in this tank who occupy the same area of the tank is a small group of whiptail catfish, whom I never see, and then there's also my rather bad-tempered silver flying fox who, well, she is still growing up herself, she's only about three inches long at this point, and so she certainly is big enough to disturb the baddest, but she spends most of her time hiding in her caves, and even when she does come out, she tends to just flit around for a little bit and then goes back to skulking again. In fact, I would go so far as to say that these two species get along very nicely, even if one is considerably bigger than the other. The only other fish to really avoid around black tiger baddis, apart from obviously, you know, huge ones that are going to eat them, would be any other cichlid or cichlid-like fish, such as dwarf gourami, apisto, betas, anything like that that might see the tiny little black tiger as a rival. And as the black tigers are so small, of course, they are going to be the ones who end up getting bullied. So though, it boils down to, Black tigers can have tank mates, just need to think a little bit carefully about finding suitable ones. And as was mentioned before, black tigers are pretty suitable for keeping with Neocaridina shrimp. They are far too small to be of any danger at all to the adults. Just bear in mind they will happily take any and all shrimplets up to about half a centimetre in length, and so if you do want the colony to grow, you'll need to provide them with a lot of cover as well, just so that they can escape from the hunting baddesses. Overall though, the black tiger baddis is, let's be honest now, a tad challenging to keep. They have quite specific housing requirements, they have quite specific feeding requirements, but once you get them settled, they become really quite hardy little fish. They don't seem to suffer badly from stress, they tolerate strange changes in the tank, 
changes like sudden fluctuations in temperature, maybe the heat has gone off for some reason, anything like that, they seem to just bounce straight back from it doesn't really bother them. In fact, the only thing they don't seem particularly good at tolerating is when they're being out-competed by other fish. Anywho though, I hope you've enjoyed this little video all about the black tiger baddis. Happy fish keeping everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye!